I'll tell you what, I wasn't a believer in these rock sliders. I thought they were sort of a gimmick until they saved this truck's life more than once. Big ups to Fab Fours. These ones are a little bit more beefier than the uh, than the factory ones too, so they helped out just as much and they still took a beating. So uh, they're starting to rust now since the paint's fading away. We gotta get this truck fixed up, so I'm grabbing the uh, trusty Makita drill here, wire brush. Is this the right way to do the job? No. Will it get the job done? Absolutely. <laughs> I do have some leftover highlighter paint. I don't know, that might be a little too much. Paint matched, rock sliders. Yeah, I don't think so. Looks a lot better. The shine you're seeing is just the angle from the sun, but it's all painted, all black. And uh, once it 100% dries, it'll match perfectly. There are many great moments in a man's life, getting married, having kids, buying a house. And one of those, I think, if those are all A tier, this should be B tier. And that's whenever you finally have a garage and can park your vehicles in your house, essentially. Garages are such a great concept. I love the fact that I can just walk out here to this insanely oversized uh, Chevy Colorado. This thing barely fits in here. We clear by inches, but it fits. But as you guys know, this is Mike's garage, Street Speed 717, staying at his house for a little bit to watch the puppies while they're on vacation. Make sure you check out their family channel for updates on that. But it is great because I now get to park the truck of the garage to uh, at least work on it during the day while the wife's at work and then I'll pull this out and she can pull her whip in here. Cold, miserable, windy day. I, I don't mind snow, I don't mind the cold, I don't mind rain even, it's the wind. I can't stand the freaking wind. But we're sheltered in here. This truck needs done up right, so we're gonna fix her up here. I was ready to let her go for the Silverado ZR2, but like this view here, and in person it looks even crazier. Like this truck is just a behemoth in this little garage. And when I say little, this is a three car oversized, like big oversized garage. Deep enough bay to still fit toolboxes and all that. And this truck, not even being a full sized, uh, takes up a lot of room. So I'm gonna have to make some adjustments on my new home plans because we're gonna have a three car garage. I forget the dimensions that we wanted to go with, but I think 36 feet deep, which is pretty insane. That's like overkill. That's not twice the length or depth of this garage, but uh, maybe like a time and a third or a time and a half. 717 detail spray, this stuff's amazing. Smells like bubble gum. And the engine bay does a complete 180 after like 30 seconds. This headlight's out and unfortunately card makes it so that you have to hardwire these if you want LED bulbs. I guess something came loose, so I gotta fix it. But luckily we're on YouTube, so done. Yep, these card headlights, uh, the wires came loose because you have to hardwire them. The wires they give you are about two inches in length, so the wire nuts I put on there, it was actually stupid of me to put wire nuts on there. I should have soldered it or done something better, which uh, is what I did now. So now this is all fixed up. I have legal headlights again. And my position still stands, do not buy car ID. I call them car ID all the time. Car ID headlights and taillights for the Chevy Colorado because uh, they're way overpriced for what you're getting. They look decent, but behind the scenes, their wires are like, well, it's the cheapest wires I've ever seen. Quality. Definitely not there. Headlights fixed. Even got the uh, the cheesy underglow fixed up. I can't decide which color I want because this would only be used for like off-road. You can just go to like a highlighter yellow to match. Yeah, it looks good. Here at 717 Supply where you can win, well, nothing right now. Of course, the Bronco that you guys could win is not in the shop whenever I come to film, but I promise you, here it is. Here also it is. You guys can win that Bronco and change your life. You guys know the drill though. Everyone says, oh, this is the last giveaway I'm gonna enter. This is your time to shine. I got a good feeling that you, the viewer right now, you're gonna be the winner. And it's gotta be by buying one of my Mandate Freedom shirts. We have the new OD green here, Mandate Freedom. This is on the front, it's the one I'm wearing right now. We also have the Mandate Freedom shirt, which has the uh, AR on the front. This one's one of my favorites. And then a couple of the Street Speed line of attire here. We have the come and take it with like the floral pattern and desert camo. Some Ukraine merch, all the proceeds of that, 100% of the proceeds of that is going to Ukrainian relief funds, trusted Ukrainian relief funds. We got some great political stickers here. Hurricanes Can I Hear Us just released some new dog toys. We have the Frisbee and also the uh, the new tennis balls to so make sure you get on that. All of these, any one of these products enters you to win the new Badlands Bronco that we have on the channel. If you guys do buy any of my merch, make sure you tag me on your Instagram story and I'll give you a follow back. Time is running out for this giveaway, but if you're watching this in the future, there's always giveaways going on on InChainDesigns.com. So make sure you hit the first link in the description and see what new vehicle we have to give away. All right, we're at the, uh, the Send It Steve headquarters here in the garage. Gonna get the drive shaft replaced, wheel speed sensor, the knuckle on the front here with the axle, it's all jacked up. Please do not hurt. Oh my God, I think this is walnut. You're burning like beautiful walnut tree. I mean, I don't know. This might be like some type of maple that's worthless. Yeah. But Steve lives the life of luxury up here. Burning walnut. Definitely. I cannot believe Split you. My own wood, no log splitter, Stupid, expensive wood. Yeah. But yeah, I got, we got the best mechanics on the case here. Uh, Steve is definitely trusted. Has fixed my vehicles before. He's got some projects here. Make, make sure you check out Steve. Send it to Steve. One of the OGs in the 717 crew. Even though I think the uh, area code up here is different. 
way different. Anyway, we're uh we got a lot of projects today. All right, we're talking major upgrades here, people. So the drive shaft, super bent, beat up. This thing is about worthless now. Uh, bent it while I was off-roading, landed on a rock, sat it right down on that, took the full weight of the truck. Uh, so that sucks. But we're getting this one out. We're gonna be taking it out to get a custom one built down in Harrisburg. Uh, have a steel one that they're gonna do because they don't have any aluminum ones and they can't really fix these. Once these aluminum ones are done, they're done like it's they're friction welded together it's just the way it goes so steel it's going to be a lot heavier but if we're going to continue to wheel this thing uh it should do a little bit better i i know that uh strength wise once these things take a hit it doesn't matter really matter what material it's made of it's going to bend or dent in some way and send it off weight so this should cure our vibration problem this is one of my biggest complaints besides not currently having four-wheel drive in the truck uh because uh, above 60 miles an hour it's almost impossible to drive this thing. So big ups to Steve here helping me out. Send it to Steve, ladies and gentlemen. It took him about 30 seconds. I'm not kidding. You can get this drive shaft out. We call this the candy cane. <laughs> oh my that's Lord. That's pretty bad. There's pro that's probably your vibration. Yeah, a little bit. How heavy is that thing? Maybe 20 mm, pounds? No, might be five pounds. So why do they make them out of aluminum? Like, um, I, I guess for to be cheap and lightweight because they're spinning so fast. Yeah, more more of a weight reduction type of thing. You just think on the ZR2 economy. have something a little more beefy. That, uh, this thing got pretty chewed up. Definitely. You can feel it. It's pretty light. Oh, yeah. If it wasn't for this knuckle on the end, this may be 10 yeah. pounds. Maybe. Wow. Yeah, that's like a beating. Well, let's uh, see if we can get one made. Yep, here at the metal shop. Gonna get this thing squared away. New one put in. They should have it done in a couple of days here, but you know what? Like we did earlier in the video, you guys get to time travel. The next day. So what we had to do here was, uh, since there's no drive shaft, we have to lock the differentials so that this thing has front wheel drive because the four wheel drive's broken on it. So this thing technically was one wheel drive that whole time. And it's uh, it's this wheel right here, passenger side on the truck here. Diff still jacked up. Got the new drive shaft. On this old one here, like Steve just pointed this out, like he said I must have let off the throttle because this was in the middle of starting to twist. That's why I was getting worried. Like if I floor it with these 37s, I bet you if I did that enough, it would start to bind this up and twist it. Absolutely. But the new drive shaft here, this one was over $1,000. Steve talked me into it because this is like primo for off-roading. Uh, he told me that this is three inches instead of four inches, so you gain a little bit of clearance there, which you wouldn't think is that big of a deal, but with a part that's moving this fast and is this crucial, that's all the difference is yeah. having something like that. It's pure steel here, so we're gaining a lot of strength, and there's some other bells and whistles on this that they add for off-roading because uh, even with steel, when it takes a punch, um, it can off-center and do weird stuff like it does with the aluminum, but this one is like the best of the best. Yeah. So I think we're set here. It is just so nice whenever a piece is broken and the truck just finally gets it back on. Goes back together as Look, I got Steve doing all this. I'm not even paying him. He's just doing this for yeah, me. I got him doing all the work. Kindness of my own heart. Like, what a maniac. Or we'll call it boredom. <laughs> like, I just had nothing to do today, Bobby. So it's well, weird. I'm glad that you're putting your uh, your free time to my endeavors here. Yeah, this is great. I don't know, it looks good in black even. It does actually look good. Yeah, we'll see. We'll see what we want to do here. I would change it to pink. You're lucky you got here soon enough because I was going to Yeah, paint Steve's it. trying to talk me to like all these different colors to paint it. And I was like, you know, maybe we do uh, like a highlighter on it, but how much dirt is that going to show? I'm not you. Yeah. Where's your Jeep? Is that Jeep gone? Yeah, yeah that Jeep's gone. Anyway, he had that, he, you know, everyone knows here you had the pink Jeep. There's remnants of that thing. Jesus, it's like this is a uh, yeah, there's the door to the fender. chop shop. But we got the, like, he had all these different colors on it. And I think the drive shaft on that was there's pink. There's door right there. Yeah, there's, uh, this is horrifying. He brings these Jeep Cherokees in here, and they see this, and they're probably just scared out of their minds. This one's got me terrified. This well, Jeep. This like, one, I think, is dead. Although it's wrecked, I think this Jeep's is dead. going to be the new build, though. <laughs> this is going to be the new build. Yes. You brought the cleanest Jeeps in here I've ever seen in my life. And this is the one that you're going to make the new build. Yes, this is the one that's It is sick, though. It's the two-door. This is like what Tom Hanks drove in uh, Castaway, and it was like the brand-new Jeep at the time. Yeah, so this one's 79,000 miles. Two-door, obviously. Like, it's a Got super it. rare. Got to be two-door, yeah. We're going to so fix it all up. Cool. I have beadlock wheels. Like, there's so much you're going to see on this. There's nothing left, though. What are you, where are you just Peter pulling Port. parts? Peter Port leaks. So I'm pulling it here. Pull it all apart. Yeah, gotcha. Dude, you should have had this for the two-door challenge. This should have been sick. Okay, so if you guys want any updates on this... These were fiberglass? Is that really what these were made of in the front? The front grill, yeah. 
Man, I'm, I am uh, definitely ignorant to the Jeep stuff, but that's crazy. I didn't know they were made of fiberglass. Drive shaft on this thing is uh, definitely gonna be a lot better. It's crazy how like with the materials, like this is steel, it's stronger. It looks way weaker than that massive pipe over there. But uh, yeah, definitely gonna be better. We got the wheel speed sensor here. We got replacement parts for that. And then Steve, in all of his just caring and kindness and giving has offered to tear out the differential up here because parts are impossible to get. Where is it? Right impossible. here. And he's going to rebuild the entire thing for me because he's just such a nice guy. I have nothing else to do. I have no other projects. I have nothing what? going on. Well, this is going to be a project, dude, because it's probably going to suck. <laughs> Dumping money into this thing so I can compete with his Jeep's coming this summer. That's but never going to happen. What do you mean? That Jeep will definitely be out on the trail. Are you oh, saying my truck won't? Yeah, this isn't going to be able to compete. Tell you what, whenever this thing has got its four-wheel drive back, drive shaft fixed, all that stuff, like we're 100%, I will go through the pond that you failed to go through. That was a bone stock Jeep. <laughs> like bone stock. We're going to be fine. It's going to be fine. I am going to guarantee that this truck does something cool and it's safe. Yes. Here I we go. I should take it through that pond right now. I think it would make it. You're out of your mind. This is what Steve wants to do. He wants to paint it pink, which is like, all right, whatever. But then he wants to like drive it around while the paint's wet and splatter the paint everywhere because yeah, he thinks it's it going to look cool. cool. Just to like be twisted looking. I guess, it, I guess it would look all right. Just pink paint everywhere. Yeah. Oh man, you're wild. No, no pink paint. If anything, it's going to be gray. Black looks pretty good. I'm just happy you hooked me up with that guy that does this custom metal work because even for the price, uh, this definitely was worth it. We're checking out the wheel speed sensor. So my update is only up to 2014. I believe the first year of the Colorado was 15, but I ended up going in here. I don't know if you can see that yeah, or not, but- I'll be able to zoom in. 2014 Silverado, I put it in under a four wheel drive, four three. And it picked it up? And it, it actually picks up oh wheel speed sensors. Oh my God, you have the actual like speeds there. Yeah, yeah, like I can have your speed up here. So now I do have it locked and you do know you do have your front diff issue. So it won't read left front. But well, look, there it's picking up all your. So you get every, you get two wheels because only yeah. two wheels. Are <laughs> only the move. two wheels that are spinning. And this one's moving, but the the sensor's all jacked up on it. Yeah. You learn something new every day. So like these scanners are cool. They are awesome to have. But like I never try stuff like this because I don't ever want to mess up somebody's truck. Yeah. But since it's yours. Yeah. Oh yeah. Then you can just screw it up. Learning like, whatever. experience. Yeah. Got everything all unhooked. Steve's got the spindle undone. I mean, this is pretty much everything here now. Calipers this off, upper control arm. This should be our freedom. And there's the axle. Now this should slide right out. So, so I was hoping that this part was just sheared off inside and all the metal that you see is actually not a good look, but I was there hoping this was sheared off in there, but it looks like you're uh, gonna have to pull the front diff out. <sighs> Damn, I mean, that's what I was expecting, but like whenever there's hope given that it might be something cheaper, yeah. yeah, there's a lot of metal. So like typically I've seen, not on these, but like Jeeps and other things, I've seen these shear off because they're obviously thinner than the rest of the shaft that you see. However, this one didn't do that. Yeah, so something internal broke. Something definitely internal. So Damn. Bye bye. That's not good, dude. Definitely not good. No, but it's in a safe place now and we can get it figured out. We're almost wrapped up here. We have a new off-roading drive shaft, a new wheel speed sensor installed. So that's all fixed up. That was so annoying whenever all the lights on the dash were on. And as you can see, all four tires on the truck are spinning. So that means that uh, Steve was actually able to find a used ZR2 differential, which I know doesn't sound like it'd be that difficult. It is insanely difficult to find a ZR2 uh, differential for the 2021 Chevy Colorado. So he was able to get that on. Uh, they don't, I don't even know if you can buy them new. Like you just don't have parts for these things right now. There's no availability. Uh, so I used one, this all worked out great. Uh, it seems to be working. I'm hoping that the axle angles and all that different stuff work out good here. It doesn't pop out again, God forbid, uh, because all that happened was it popped out and then it being popped out allowed dirt to get in and metal and all this different crap to just rip apart the, uh, the front differential. So that's great. I was almost about to go to just a regular front differential, um, but then I would lose my locker, which we don't want to do that. So happy we were able to get everything fixed on this thing. And she is ready to hit the trails this summer and spring. Lots of big plans for it here. We're keeping the 37s, boys, and the Chevy Colorado ZR2 lives on. Uh, she's just waiting for her big brother to get here, the Silverado ZR2. I'm actually going to text Beaver as soon as I finish this little soundbite voiceover uh, because I want updates on that thing. I see that some are starting to hit lots as like little test vehicles, promotion demos. 
Uh, so I want to get an update on mine, see whenever that's going to hit the channel because I am so freaking excited for that machine. Thank you guys so much for watching. Subscribe if you want to see more content like this. RF Racing 717 on Instagram. You want to follow me on there. Likes are always appreciated. If you made it this far in the video, say send it. Homage to send it to Steve for fixing the truck. Giveaway for the Ford Bronco Badlands Edition is going on right now, so make sure you hit that up in the description. Times five entries right now. Thank you guys again for watching. I'll see you next time. Thank you.